Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I have an official announcement. I'm friends with AMD again. They somehow managed to fix most of the issues that I had with AFMF when it first got merged into the official Adrenaline branch. I guess to explain what I mean by this, because I'm going to assume that not all of you watching this video has the full context, let me give you all a little bit of a backstory. So in 2023, AMD, after almost a year of ducking us, finally released FSR 3 frame generation. Now I personally had pretty mixed opinions on this. On one hand, I think it's a good solution for CPU bottleneck games because previous versions of DLSS and FSR used to recoup performance by rendering the game at a lower resolution and then upscaling it to the target resolution and while that works fine when you're being GPU bound, once we start getting into CPU bottlenecks, upscaling can only help to a certain degree. Even toning down the graphics settings don't always help, which is what I believe frame generation aims to address. However, for me, because I'm someone who plays action-oriented games where frame timings are really important, frame generation was never super attractive to me. I also think frame gen looks pretty ass when you're working with a base frame rate below 60, and honestly, if the only games that are feasible to use frame gen are the ones that have to run at a 60fps bare minimum frame rate, I would honestly rather just run at those exact frame rates than trying to interpolate them, because at least the input latency and image fluidity will be consistent. Now, there were other issues specific to FSR 3 frame gen, mainly the fact that it required FSR to be active, and FSR compared to running the game natively or even compared to other upscaling technologies can lead to some extra shimmering and artifacts, so it never felt super ideal to use FSR frame gen over even just running the game in DLSS performance mode in some instances. However, when it comes to this problem, AMD actually managed to fix this by both improving the image reconstruction with FSR 3.1 and also decoupling the frame gen with the upscaler. That way you don't need FSR to run frame gen and based on the feedback that I've heard, it seems like people actually like AMD's frame gen more than Nvidia's one, which to me is mind blowing given how it doesn't require any AI accelerators. However, even discounting the issues that I listed earlier regarding input latency and frame times, there is one other problem with FSR 3 frame gen. Now, Technically speaking, this isn't an issue in the grand scheme of things, but one sort of issue that FSR has had ever since FSR 2 is that previously with AMD's first rendition of their upscaling technology, it was very easy to integrate it into any application. In fact, if you're a Linux gamer, you can very easily enable FSR either through GameScope or Proton GE with a few environmental variables, which would work with most games out there rendering with Vulkan. But ever since FSR 2, this tech now requires the game's motion factors, which means that it needs to be specifically integrated into the game, which isn't something you can just easily do with just any application. So for example, a lot of emulators, while they do support Fidelity FX Super Resolution, it's only the first edition, which is notably inferior to FSR 2. And FSR 3 frame generation has the same issue. So even though it is open source and you can probably compile the DLL if you really wanted to, it's not like you're going to see this getting integrated into emulators, similarly to FSR 1, which is why I've always had a bigger interest in AMD's alternative frame generation software, namely AFMF. You see, I'm a fan of emulation, and having to deal with a lot of games that have frame caps that are pretty much impossible to unlock it without breaking something, AFMF is theoretically the perfect solution for this. Because other than that, unless you're willing to wait until someone releases a frame rate patch for whatever game you're trying to emulate, this is probably the only solution you will have for at least doubling your frame rate. Yes, you will still have input delay, maybe even more than normal FSR 3 frame generation. Yes, you might see some artifacts, but at the end of the day, let's remind ourselves when we're talking about emulation. If image preservation and graphical integrity is something that matters to you, you're in the wrong field. We all emulate old games with the expectation that we might see some visual inaccuracies. And to its credit, AFMF, unless you're zooming in at like 600% with a playback speed of like 0.1 times, you're probably not even going to notice any visual artifacts for the most part. Well, I mean, <laughs> I guess up until now, but uh, uh, more on that later. Now, with that said, AFMF, when it first came out during the beta, it had three main issues. Number one, only worked with RDNA 3. Number two, only worked with DX11 and 12 games. Number three, pretty severe jitters. Now, out of these three issues, when AFMF was finally merged to the main adrenaline branch, AMD only fixed 
one of those issues. So issue number one, AMD later added support for RDNA 2 during the beta. I doubt older generations will get support for AFMF, so I'm pretty sure this is the most that we're gonna get from AMD. Maybe modded drivers might do something crazy, but as far as the official drivers, I don't think AMD is gonna give a fuck. Issue number two. Now, funnily enough, initially this was actually fixed during one of the later versions of the beta drivers when AMD allowed you to run AFMF in unsupported APIs. Of course, there was no guarantee that it would work as well as the X11 and 12, but look, we all tested Vulkan, it worked about as well as DirectX. But despite this, AMD spread their ass cheeks and shat all over our faces by restricting this tech to DX11 and 12 once it was merged to Adrenaline. Even though we all proved that it works just fine with Vulkan, but AMD they didn't care, which was a very huge shame because if you're in the emulation scene, then you know that the vast majority of emulators out there use either OpenGL or Vulkan. Like at the top of my head, I can only think of two emulators that I use regularly that have support for DirectX. So just like that, AMD ended up alienating a large market of emulation enthusiasts by doing this. And I was pretty mad. I even made a rent video because <laughs> at the time at least, it was legitimately the saving grace for many retro games locked to 30 FPS. And AMD completely blew it. Now as for issue number three, that also did not get fixed and that was very unlikely to get fixed anytime soon and the reason for that being <sighs> you see the reason for why AFMF was causing severe jitters wasn't because of any performance penalties or driver overhead it was actually because AMD implemented this algorithm that made it so in order to preserve the image quality every time there was too much motion they would disable the number of interpolated frames this wasn't an issue with the standard FSR 3 frame generation because those ones had access to the game's motion vectors, but since FMF is a driver built-in solution, it has a harder time recreating frames, especially when there's too much movement on screen. So AMD implemented a fallback for whenever the game presented too much motion. The problem though is that this created a lot of frame drops, and it also felt very antithetical to the whole purpose of frame generation. Like the reason people usually want higher frame rates is for fast movements, and yet that's the one time when the frame rate will drop the most. Now I've always imagined that AMD knew that this was a severe issue and at some point in the future they would try to address it, and they finally did. So recently they uh... <laughs> They released a beta driver for AFMF2, their new version of fluid motion frames that has some pretty good improvements actually. So for one, they say that they improved the latency. Now I'm just going to tell you up front, I still feel input latency. Admittedly, I'm testing games that have a 30 FPS as the base frame rate, so maybe I'm just shooting myself in the foot from the get-go, but I just wanted to be fully transparent in this regard. It is still far from matching the 16.6 millisecond latency that I would usually get from a true 60 FPS experience, even with anti like a label, but just keep that in mind. They have a performance mode which they claim reduces the overhead of AFMF. I didn't enable this because they claimed that this was meant for mobile graphics, and I have a feeling that my RX 6700 XT will be fine in this regard. The best future though is search mode. You can pick between standard and high. So standard essentially behaves the same way AFMF1 did, in which whenever there was too much movement, it would disable the interpolation. But with high, this setting is pretty much disabled, at least partially disabled. And AFMF will become active at nearly all times, regardless of how much it will degrade the image quality. Now, by default, search mode is set to auto, and from what I understand, it will choose either standard or high, depending on the resolution. So if you're running the game at 1440p or higher, it'll be set to high because from what I understand, your GPU will have enough visual information to better interpolate frames compared to a lower resolution like 1080p. Me personally, I don't give a fuck and I'm just gonna set it to high in every game. Now, AMD describes this as AI optimized enhancements and I don't know if they're just using AI as a buzzword or this setting could legitimately be better optimized if your GPU has AI accelerators which makes me wonder if having RDNA 3 could either improve the smoothness or the image preservation. Now, I don't have a 7000 series card, so fuck do I know, but it does make me curious. Finally, and this my friends, is our blessing from the heavens. AFMF now officially supports Vulkan and OpenGL. 
Wow! <laughs> Fucking wow! Emulation gang, we are eating tonight. Now, regarding this announcement, you may notice that they specifically name drop OpenGL and Falcon. They didn't say that this now supports other APIs, so I'm sure you might be thinking, Twisted, what about games that run under DirectX 10, 9, or older? They still don't work with AFMF. Whatever shall I do? Relax. I have a solution for you. So, I will link in the description of my video the GitHub page for DXVK. Go to releases and download their latest archive. Now, hypothetically, let's say you want to play Storm Revolution. Now, this game is a 32-bit application running under DirectX 9. So, what you should do is go to the X32 folder and copy the DLL file called D3D9 into the game's main folder, usually where it has the executable. And... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Your game will now run under Vulkan instead of whatever decrepit version of DirectX it's relying on, and it should work with AFMF most of the times. The last thing I want to mention is that you can use AFMF with Radeon Chill, and although this is a nice feature, especially for targeting the refresh rate of your monitor, in my opinion, this would be a much more neat feature if it didn't cut the frame rate in half, which depending on the base frame rate could potentially cause some artifacts, including screen tearing, which defeats the whole purpose of matching the refresh rate of your monitor in the first place. Now as far as my personal experience with AFMF, now I will give a little bit of a warning for anyone who wants to make videos about this. So one of the main setbacks of using AFMF for content creation is that you can't record it using OBS or even AMD's own built-in recorder because both of them have two main issues. For one, the overlay software isn't going to capture the frame counter of the frame generation. Now, AMD's own built-in overlay does do that, but if you record the video, it just won't show. And also the interpolated frames also won't show up in the video. So you recording the video, you're essentially just recording the gameplay in its original frame rate without it being interpolated. And so the only way that I'm able to capture this is by <laughs> having a second computer uh, running Windows 11. Um, I have a capture card here. And so this PC right here is recording the footage while this one is actually, it's the main client that's actually playing the game. So that was pretty much the only way I was able to do this. Also, this goes without saying, if you see screen tearing, some of it is because of AFMF, but some of it is also because of the capture card. So do bear in mind that if you see screen tearing in the video, not all of it is a result of AFMF. I have a couple of things that I want to note. For one, in the past, AMD's metric overlay used to trip the fuck up when running on virtual machines. But now it works fine, which makes testing this a lot easier, especially since AMD's overlay is the only one that's able to capture the interpolated frames. Granted, screen recordings still don't work with AFMF, so you'll have to use a capture card to demonstrate the results. Secondly, I can't entirely say if this is an isolated occurrence, but I've noticed that RPCS3 has very severe stability issues with AFMF. The first time you enable it, the game will become inexplicably choppy, and in my experience, it took a few game reloads before I was able to get it working appropriately. I really wouldn't be able to tell you why this is happening because I genuinely don't know. I have a suspicion that it might have something to do with how RPCS3 compiles shaders because I've noticed that the game will sometimes freeze even more than usual when I have AFMF on and it's the first time compiling the shaders, at least in some scenes. I honestly don't know if anyone has any idea why the fuck this could be happening, please let me know because I'm really confused. But when the tech actually works, it's fairly smooth when search mode is set to high. I wouldn't say that it's locked to 60 though, it does have tendencies to drop a little, but this is significantly better than when search mode is set to standard, which to me was just flat out unplayable. With that said, while I was testing Storm Generations, I've noticed more screen tearing than usual. It's kind of shimmery during a few transitions, but honestly, this is what you get by disabling the fallback, and I would honestly rather have this than the stuttering mess that AFMF used to be before. I've also noticed that while search mode set to high does reduce the amount of times it will fall back to the base frame rate, I have still been able to find a few scenarios where it will fall back, so it still has limitations. Other than those observations, I would say that with these new improvements, 
I can safely say that AMD is currently the king of emulation, and for two reasons now. The first is AVX12, which Intel CPUs used to support up until the 13th gen when they dropped it, leaving AMD's Zen 4 completely alone, and they're only gonna get better with Zen 5, which will be coming out very soon for desktop. And let me tell you right now, AVX12 really helps with emulation. And now with the Radeon division, they are the only GPU vendor that has a driver built-in solution for interpolated frames with any application running DirectX 11, 12, OpenGL, and Vulkan, giving us the opportunity to double the frame rate of many games that are in need of that. And since a lot of the software is open source, it's only going to facilitate development and optimization for their APIs, and I can only see good things coming from now. Now of course, if you don't have an AMD card or you have an older generation, you can always use lossless scaling frame generation provided that you're okay with paying 6 bucks. Although based on some feedback that I've seen, at least the latency seems to be a little worse than AFMF. As for image quality, I've heard mixed opinions. I think it's leaning more towards lossless scaling, but honestly, even if there were some games where AFMF was better, at the end of the day, it's still better than not having the future at all if you don't have an AMD card. The only question I have right now is, should I get RDNA 3? I'm inclined to say no because I'm waiting for RDNA 5. I might consider RDNA 4 if they decide to change their mind and release a top die, but I don't think they will, so I'll just have to wait for the next generation. But with recent acquisitions and partnerships, I have a feeling that AMD really wants to leverage AI for their future software endeavors, so RDNA 2, as great of a generation it may have been, I think it's only a matter of time before AMD starts to not really prioritize software-based solutions as alternative for AI-powered features. I think for now, I'll stick with RDNA 2, but I will continue to keep an eye on the direction that AMD is taking because uh, things are getting pretty spicy. But yeah, I think that's all I have to share. Take care.